Hi guys, Mr. Ruff Waffles here. Treyarch are changing their Easter egg design philosophy, and today I want to talk with all of you about what that means for you as a player, and whether or not this is going to be a good or a bad thing, because it honestly could go either way. There are pros and cons. The fact that they are taking a look at Easter eggs and trying to completely transform them into something new here is kind of a scary thought, because zombies has worked the same way for so long, but I mean, things have to change to evolve and become better, and so maybe it will ultimately be the right decision. I'll give you all the context in a second, but first, a quick word from this video's sponsors, ShopTagger, a free app and Chrome extension that ensures you never miss a price drop or coupon code while shopping online. You can check it out via the link below. So when I shop online, there are usually things like computer graphics cards or maybe even game consoles, which are either out of stock or being sold at a price that's just outside my budget. And this is where ShopTagger comes in. I can just set up alerts for price drops or restocks, and then I'll get notified when those things happen. To use it, download the ShopTagger extension, as you can see I'm doing here, and then go to the item you want to keep an eye on and click the ShopTagger button to set up alerts. You can get notified for sales, restocks, or coupons, and you can sort the items you're watching into different lists to keep them all organized. ShopTagger will also check for different coupons you can use at checkout to save you even more money, but this only works in the Chrome browser version, so make sure you install that. They've also just launched a new cashback feature, which lets you earn cash via PayPal when you shop from select retail partners, which makes it even more useful. So click the link in the description to get ShopTagger on your computer and phone and see how much money you can save by using it. Okay, so as many of you know, I recently had an opportunity to sit down with Treyarch devs and talk about Outbreak and the future of the mode and what their plans were for Season 2 and beyond. And one of the devs that I got to speak to was Corky Lamkul, who's the creative director for Cold War Zombies and has been at Treyarch for 16 years and worked on Zombies since the very beginning. In a recent interview, he was asked about Easter eggs and how the design of Easter eggs is going to change for the rest of this year and beyond, and it's his comments and kind of philosophy that a lot of this video's discussion is going to revolve around. There are kind of two camps, I think, when it comes to Easter egg design. One is the group of people that are really hardcore players, and they want a more difficult hunt. They think that Firebase Z getting solved in like an hour and a half is simply too easy, and it kind of ruins the hype on day one, because obviously, if you've got maps like Revelations in the past, for instance, that had some crazy, insanely difficult steps, arbitrary difficulty though, and that made the hunt really long, that also meant that there was a lot of hype around the map for a lot longer because for like 11 days, people were completely banging their head against walls trying to figure out how to do the egg. And those people also feel like if they're just guided through the egg, like if it's sort of handheld, then it's a bit of a boring experience. They're looking for a real challenge here where as a player that's kind of reached the end game of zombies skill and has kind of hit that cap, the Easter egg hunt is one of the only ways that you can kind of flex those muscles and really show off that you might be be a better player than your friend, for instance, because you're able to survive in this new map, this new experience, while also discovering all this new stuff and figuring out a load of puzzles. So that's player type number one. They want it to be hard. They've always liked it being hard. That's kind of their favorite thing. And then you have people with the complete opposite opinion, pretty much, which is that zombies Easter eggs should be accessible. It's not about how long the hunt takes because A, you want to make sure that it's fun to replay, and B, also, you want to make sure that it's actually something that people get to experience in the first place. If the Easter eggs are so astronomically difficult that they're completely unattainable for new players or people that aren't so good at the game, then that content just goes unseen. And it's all well and good appealing to, let's say, 1% of the community that loves that really hardcore experience. But if 99% of people never see that content, then is it even worth Treyarch making it in the first place? Surely all the dev time that they're spending on it could be better spent elsewhere on content that is going to benefit every player instead of only catering to the Easter egg and kind of world first and all that sort of side of the community. And the way people make this point is often in this sort of context. So they'll say something like, since Mob of the Dead or maybe since Origins, Easter eggs have become the backbone of every map so that you basically have to do or learn an Easter egg if you want to have fun on a map or continue to play it successfully. And so in Origins, the example of that would be you kind of have to build the staves in order to have a fighting chance. And building the staves is such a big process. It takes so much effort that it takes away from the other parts of the gameplay loop because you spend so much time like trying to do this little puzzly challenge or something instead of just killing zombies. I've seen the same argument being said 
required for maps that have complicated processes to turn on the power or to get the pack punch activated or what have you or to do anything that's kind of like a baseline in terms of the wonder weapon in the map or things like that people will often make the argument that that is catering to that one percent of the community instead of focusing on the general community's ability to replay the map and there's total fairness in this you think of a map like shadows of evil 99 percent of players i'm pretty sure don't know what the hell to do in beast mode they jump into beast mode and they are confused there's no onboarding experience in bo3 there's no kind of on-ramp to basically let you know that yes okay as a new player you can do this to make this happen you can do that to make this happen there's nothing like that in the game and as such you are entirely reliant on youtube tutorials and things like that in order to have a fighting chance and obviously speaking from the perspective of a youtuber that relies on views in order to put food on my table and pay my bills it's obviously great for me when things are maybe a little confusing because it means that then i can serve the purpose of educating people and helping them out to solve those difficult puzzles and to get through those challenging features but it's not that clear cut it's not as simple as oh they made the easter egg complex well i guess mr ruffle waffles is going to be happy because it also is greatly in my interest for the overall community to be in a good place in terms of just those general newbie players to be enjoying the game because if they're invested in the game if they're having fun and if they feel like they can access the content and feel like it's bringing them into the community successfully that means they're much more likely to be a long-term fan of call of duty zombies instead of playing it once and never touching it again and there are genuinely thousands of other videos that i've poured hours and hours into over the years so that those people can say okay maybe i no longer need the mr Ruffle waffles no nonsense firebow guide but maybe i do want to learn about what's going on in the story here and so i can watch him for that there are other benefits to the community being in a healthier place than just oh i need it to be unhealthy so i can get my guide views like it doesn't work like that and what's interesting is you then have people that will argue the flip side of that flip side and they'll say yeah shadows didn't have an onboarding experience but that meant that for the players that invested their time it was incredibly rewarding they felt like they were really learning a system that was like an exclusive club that made them kind of special in some way and i know that sounds kind of silly but people genuinely feel that way they feel like zombies has been this kind of cult kind of game where if you're good at it it's because you really put the time in to kind of bang your head against the wall like i was saying earlier in order to get through all of the difficulty that's there in the first place and kind of emerge outwards afterwards into this new experience that is really awesome once you can get past those initial hurdles so there are people that land on all sides of the spectrum here in terms of their opinions of easter eggs and just general map design honestly for cod zombies it's a really broad spectrum and the community fills it end to end they have completely polar opposite opinions in so many cases so the golden question is now that jason blundell has left treyarch and his design philosophies have left with him what do the other remaining devs at the studio including corky lamb cool creative director for the mode what do they think about this exact question should easter eggs be much easier should they be accessible should they be transparent and should they be a handheld experience or should they be gate kept should they be for the one percent only the top players and that's it almost like a closed club where you're either a sick zombies player or you're just never going to be cracked enough to do them, bud. Sorry about that. And so let's hear from Corky. He says, so much development time goes into designing Easter eggs for Call of Duty zombies. And if you look at the metrics from the past, less than 2% of players were actually seeing Easter egg content unless it was shown on YouTube. Now, this is a weird stat because basically every Easter egg is shown on YouTube. So the unless it's shown on YouTube thing is a little odd unless what he's saying is that about 2% of players try and hunt day one and they try and engage in that Easter egg hunting experience. And then beyond that, it opens up to the rest of the community kind of thing once all the guides come out and stuff like that and people start watching me for my no-nonsense and all that good stuff. It wouldn't be right, I don't think, to say that only 2% of players do Easter eggs in general because you can see via trophy completions that the numbers are often higher than that. So I think a little clarity from this from Corky in future could be really interesting to hear, but his point remains regardless of whether he means it like I've interpreted or slightly differently. So we'll move on to his next point. He says, if you look at the stats now, there are a lot of people and many of them have been playing zombies for the last 10 or 12 years and they are only now completing their first ever Easter eggs. And this is exactly what Corky is going for. He's saying that it is a priority at 
at Treyarch right now to make Easter eggs less obscure and make sure the steps make sense with the narrative. They'll still have some challenge, but they won't be crazy hard like they used to be. And to back this up, if you guys think that this can't possibly be true, surely they would have done previous Easter eggs. I've seen so many stories like this in my Twitter mentions, in my YouTube comments, and also I was on Twitch the other day just going through a load of small streamers that were streaming zombies and having a little chat with them about what they were getting up to. And I met a bunch of people that night that were saying, yeah, I mean, I've done the D-Machine Easter egg. That was fun. And I've done the Easter egg for Firebase Z, but I've never played any of the previous games. Like imagine being in that person's shoes. You've done Firebase Z and D-Machine and you have origins to go back to. You get to experience Dirt Eisen for the first time. I'm low-key a little bit jealous, dude. But it's a good sign because it means that those people are being onboarded now. And then they do have that aspirational content to go back to in the past that is going to be harder for them, but they're getting hooked on the zombies experience. And that is a fantastic thing. Now, in my mind, the ultimate danger here is that they continue in this direction. They keep making things more accessible, a little bit more handheld, a little bit more transparent. And those are good things. Don't get me wrong, but they maybe go a little too far and they start to lose the hardcore community that has been with the game since day one and that are going to need to feel like they have challenge of some kind if they're going to stick around. And this has already started. They've already started falling off in some regards because take the high round community, for instance, right? I spoke to a bunch of people pre-launch and I tried to get a feeling for what the game would need in order to be successful for them. And one of the things that was really worrying for a lot of people was self-revives. And now in the game, you basically have infinite self-revives. You can get like 50 downs in a high round game and it still be just a normal run. And for a lot of people, that turns them off. They feel like it kind of takes the skill ceiling and just drops it massively because you're no longer having to be a really efficient, crazy good zombies player. You can basically mess up a bunch and still get just as far. And so those players are seeing those sorts of decisions being made and going, okay, well, they're making it noob friendly. So I kind of get it, but then it's less appealing to me personally. And if these decisions keep going in this direction more and more, then I do worry that those people will simply stop playing the game. So what's the solution here? Where is the balance? And honestly, I don't think there's a simple answer to that question. However, I think there are certain things that Treyarch can do in order to try and appease both groups. And one of those things would be when we get to the end of the DLC season in DLC 4 or whenever it might be, DLC 5, Zombies Chronicles 2, whatever you want to do, right? When everything is wrapping up and we're getting our last map for this game, give us an Easter egg where the difficulty is cranked up. Give us another Origins. Give us something really complicated. And the reason for timing it then is that you basically leave the community with a gift to work on for a longer amount of time. If someone has already conquered D-Machine, Firebase Z, they've been having a great time in Outbreak, they're kind of at the skill level of the game, step it up a notch at the end so that that player doesn't just complete DLC 4 and then go, all right, well, I guess I'm done with this now. They instead actually have a goal to attain, something to work towards and get better at zombies so that in the next game, the skill level can be raised just a little bit and it will really help in the appeasing of both sides of the community, those newer players and those players that have put the time in to get better. I think in the short term, in the next map, for instance, having another fairly straightforward Easter egg is not going to be the end of the world because Treyarch are trying to solidify in the community's mind that zombies is for everyone. It's not an exclusive club anymore and and if you want to play it on an afternoon and maybe even do the Easter egg, you may be able to just figure it out yourself by listening to the audio from the characters and just being in the match. You don't even need to look up a YouTube guide necessarily. You don't need to go to my chronorium.com site and look up how to do the valves in Garod Crovy. None of those things are there. Instead, it's much more just about playing the game and being walked through almost like a campaign mission. And I think that's okay. If it means that the community overall is more healthy than as a hardcore player might myself, I'm willing to kind of lose those really exciting parts of the experience for a bit just so that Treyarch can do that onboarding. But I want to make it clear to Treyarch right now that as much as I appreciate your efforts there, you absolutely must not forget that the hardcore guys are basically just chomping at the bit right now, waiting for stuff to appeal directly to them in terms of the ultimate endgame experience for Cold War. I don't think we're there yet. I think they've got some work to do, and I think it will be fantastic when we do get there because the foundations for this game are so solid, but Treyarch will eventually need to make sure that they do do something for that side of the community as well. I'm going to wrap things up here, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'm also going to do a no-nonsense podcast on this topic with the boys in the next couple of days, so look out for that. Thanks to ShopTagger for sponsoring the video. Make sure to click the link in the description if you want to go check that out, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.